biochemistry and the metabolism of bone and bone remodeling. And this lecture, the topics covered will be the definition of calcium balance and bone remodeling, description of the normal distribution and metabolism of calcium and phosphorus in the body, as well as the hormones and vitamins that regulate calcium metabolism and bone remodeling, and also some description about the biochemical changes in bone remodeling disorders. And this lecture will cover the process of bone remodeling, calcium, phosphorus metabolism, role of parathyroid, estrogen and vitamin D in bone remodeling and disorders of bones and joints. Starting with the topic of bone metabolism, we have to know that bone acts as a reservoir for calcium and phosphate. And bone performs many functions. First, of which is a mechanical support function, it acts as a reservoir for calcium and phosphorus in the body, and it acts as a third line buffer as it releases phosphate and bicarbonate in long term metabolic acidosis. Living bone is not a constant structure as it undergoes remodeling every three to five years with two constant processes which are formation and degradation. These two processes are attributed to the activity of osteoclast and osteoclast respectively. So we have the expression of bone remodeling. What is bone remodeling? It's a process that allows for the release and the uptake of calcium and bone minerals. So calcium level is a controller of the bone remodeling process. Bone remodeling is a constant regulated process and its rate is determined and regulated at multiple levels. So bone remodeling is an orchestrated process between two types of cells which are osteoclasts and osteoclasts and they represent two main types of cellular composition of bone. Osteoclasts originate from mesenchymal cells of the bone marrow and have protein synthetic activity and are rich in alkaline phosphatase. And as you see in the figure, membranes of osteoblasts have receptors for parathyroid hormone, calcitrol, growth factors, estrogen, and they also have mechanoreceptors. The primary function of osteoblasts is the formation of bone matrix and mineralization. 
Also, they have a role in management of maturation and activity of osteoclasts. When osteoclasts are encased in bone, they become osteocytes. The other type of cells in the bone is the osteoclast. Osteoclasts are formed from the hematopoietic cells or the monocyte macrophage lineage. These cells contain lysosome filled photolytic enzymes as collagenase gelatinase and catepsins. They also have an acid phosphatase isoenzyme. Membranes of osteoclasts contain proton bumps which serve to decrease the pH from 7 to 4 and they also have receptors for calcitonin. Osteoclast activity is controlled by signals from osteoclasts, as we mentioned earlier. And the primary function of osteoclast is bone resorption or bone degradation. And this runs parallel to an increased calcemia or elevated calcium level. All cells of the bone are embedded in an extracellular matrix formed of an organic component which is collagen and non-collagenous proteins and an inorganic component which is apatite that is a crystalline form of calcium phosphate in the form of hydroxyapatite, carbonate apatite and fluoroapatite. The difference between osteoclasts and osteoclasts, the two main cells in bone. First, osteoclasts are the bone forming cells. They are responsible for sense of bone matrix, which is formed of type 1 collagen, osteocalcin, osteonectin, and other proteins. Matrix formation is followed by mineralization or deposition of minerals. Second is osteoclasts, which are 
the bone degrading or bone resorbing cells they contain degrading enzymes that degrade proteins of the matrix osteoclast served another function which is acidification of bone environment which favors mineral dissolution the main function of osteoclasts is activation of osteoclasts via rank L which is receptor activator of nuclear factor kappa B ligand production this ligand binds to receptors on osteoclasts to regulate their differentiation and function the main function of osteoclasts is bone resorption after being differentiated from pro osteoclasts by the effect of rank L or receptor activator of nuclear factor kappa B ligand on their receptors So, the balance between osteoclast and osteoclast activity is important to orchestrate the process or regulate the process of bone growth and remodeling. So, the two processes are not separated but are independently regulated. It's important to focus on the role of proton bombs in membranes of osteoclasts as they reduce the pH from 7 to 4 and this acidification is necessary for the activity of enzymes and the solution of hydroxyapatite to release calcium during the process of bone resorption. As mentioned earlier, the two processes are coordinated in an activation, resorption, formation cycle. They are balanced so that bone mass remains constant in others. 
pathological stage develop when this balance is disturbed whether by excessive formation or resorption of bone. Regulation of body modeling process occurs at two levels, either local or systemic. Local regulation at the level of osteoclasts and osteoclasts by factors and ligands produced by osteoclasts, known as macrophage colon stimulating factors, receptor activator of nuclear factor kappa P ligand or rank L and osteoprotegrin. These ligands are received by receptors on progenitor stem cells in bone marrow, pro-osteoclasts and active osteoclasts. These ligands are responsible for regulating the function of osteoclasts and also their differentiation. Macrophage, colon stimulating factor, and rank L stimulate or activate pro osteoclast and osteoclast differentiation. Whereas osteoprotegrin inhibits osteoclast development. The systemic control of bone remodeling is through controlling calcium balance, and this is achieved mainly by two hormones, a parathyroid hormone and vitamin D. A third hormone, which is Osteocalcin plays a minor role in this process. Calcium metabolism and its regulation. Some points of this topic have to be known. Ninety nine percent of calcium is present in heart tissues as hydroxy apatite, especially in bones and teeth. This structure or combination of calcium and phosphate is sensitive to acidity. So, at low pH states, hydroxyapatite dissolves and sets calcium free. And this process is achieved by the proton bonds of osteoclasts to resolve bone and release calcium. Calcium in blood is present in three forms ionized or active form, which is about 50% of the calcium present in blood. Protein bound, which is mainly albumin, and this represents about 40%, and 10% in complexes with lactate, phosphate, citrate, or bicarbonate. The recommended daily intake and plasma concentrations and how it is excreted is not a big deal, but the important point is the regulation of calcium level in blood, which is achieved.
by two main hormones as mentioned earlier the parathyroid hormone and vitamin D although other hormones may have contributions second mineral that participates in bone formation and metabolism is a phosphate normal plasma concentrations are nearly half of those of calcium and forms in plasma are also ionized protein bound and a third component complexed with other minerals as calcium or magnesium and parathyroid hormone is a main regulator of phosphate levels the process of calcium turnover calcium levels are balanced by the contribution of different processes intake absorption deposition and excretion as outlined in this figure vitamin d3 and calcium control as outlined in this biothensitic pathway of vitamin D senses that starts in the skin by converting cholesterol into cholecalciferol or vitamin D3. Cholecalciferol is hydroxylated at the 25 position in the liver and at position 1 in the kidney. The resulting 125 dihydroxycholecalciferol or the active form of vitamin D performs different functions which ends in elevating plasma calcium levels. The parathyroid hormone contributes to the activation of renal alpha 1 alpha hydroxylase and thus is considered as a regulator of vitamin D synthesis. Parathyroid hormone production is inhibited by a negative feedback process when calcium level in blood are raised to normal levels. The actions of vitamin D. Vitamin D acts by inducing a sense of a calcium binding protein which sequesters calcium and allows calcium absorption against high calcium gradients and this means absorption occurs even when the concentration in enterocytes is high As we mentioned earlier, that other hormones contribute to the calcium metabolism. We have estrogen, prolactin, and growth hormones, which stimulate the 1 alpha hydroxylase of the kidney. And this increases the sense of vitamin D. This 
for cares to increase calcium absorption during pregnancy, lactation, and growth. لا parathyroid hormone parathyroid hormone is the dominant regulator of plasma calcium and its excretion reaches maximum levels when plasma calcium is lower below 3.5 mg per deciliter or about one third of its normal level Parathyroid gland cells have receptors that sense the levels of calcium in blood and initiate a cyclic MP response that ends in parathyroid hormone secretion. And as we mentioned earlier, vitamin D also inhibits or regulates parathyroid hormone gene expression by a negative feedback process. The third hormone that regulates blood calcium levels is the calcitonin, which is considered as a physiological antagonist of parathyroid hormones, and this means it lowers calcium levels when it is elevated, but this hormone has a minor role. It acts via a cyclic MB or acts via cyclic AMB to inhibit osteoclast motility and inactivates them, thereby reducing bone resorption and calcium release from bones. Hormonal control of calcium and calcium homeostasis, as expected from the figure, 
the parathyroid gland releases parathyroid hormone in calcium level is lowered and this stimulates osteoclast through the parathyroid hormone receptor present on the membranes to resolve bones and release calcium also parathyroid hormone activates vitamin D senses which produces its actions to elevate blood calcium level calcitonin as an antagonist for parathyroid hormone is released when calcium level is elevated but this process has a minor role in regulating plasma calcium levels to summarize the hormonal control of calcium and calcium balance we have two main hormones parathyroid hormone and vitamin D which we mentioned their actions previously we can see that there are other hormones besides parathyroid hormone vitamin D and calcitonin and these hormones participate and regulating plasma calcium level we have estrogen and thyroid hormones which increase plasma calcium level and we have glucocorticoids that have a reducing plasma calcium level And to summarize the local factors affecting bone remodeling process, we have factors that affect osteoclast activity as insulin like growth factor, tumor growth factor, which increase osteoclast activity. Other factors as interleukins, prostaglandins, and some inflammatory mediators stimulate osteoclast activity and bone degradation. We have other factors that may contribute in the process of bone remodeling, which are the local stresses exerted in on bones, electrical stimulation, some environmental factors as temperature, oxygen level, and acid base balance. We reach that topic of bone metabolic disorders the definition of a metabolic bone disease is that it is an abnormality in bone caused by a disorder in metabolism of minerals such as calcium phosphorus magnesium or a defect in the vitamins and hormones that control calcium and phosphorus level. The bone metabolic disorder is reversible once the defect has been treated by restoring normal calcium level or vitamin D <clears throat> bone 
non-metabolic disease has to be differentiated from genetic bone disorders where the defect is in a specific signaling pathway in cells and leads to a metabolic bone defect. For example, we have a genetic or hereditary hypophosphatemia which may cause a metabolic disorder osteomalacia. The genetic defect itself is not reversed but can be compensated for by therapy. So a genetic disorder leads to a metabolic bone disease but not the reverse. We will focus on some points regarding bone metabolic disorders regarding their presentation. As these disorders are diagnosed first by the presentation where there may be a skeletal abnormality due to osteopenia. And in this case, we have to look for the calcium levels in blood, hormonal levels for hormones that control calcium level, and manifestations of hormonal disorders. An important point in this topic is when to investigate these cases. We have to investigate bone metabolic disorders in elderly patients, persons over uh, under 50 years, persons with repeated fractures or symptoms of hormonal disorders. So in these cases we start with the assessment of patient condition from history of the disorder, examination, and biochemical investigations as alkaline phosphatase levels, parathyroid hormone and vitamin D levels, calcium and phosphate levels in plasma. The first of these disorders is osteoporosis, which is a condition characterized by a reduction in bone mass per unit volume and manifested as bone fragility in both menopausal women and elderly males with evident risk factors as smoking, alcoholism, drug abuse or reduced calcium intake. This disorder may be primary as in postmenopausal women or secondary due to malignancy, drugs as steroids or any other endocrine disorder. Investigation and treatment of these cases are according to the etiology. Second disorder is osteomalacia and rickets, which are disorders attributed to incomplete mineralization of osteoid in adults and children, respectively. The etiology may be due to vitamin D deficiency or vitamin D resistance. Also decreased production of vitamin D in cases of liver disease and kidney disease. And this disorders or these disorders have characteristic bone features like bone curvatures, frozen repeats, delayed teething, etc. Third disorder 
renal and osteodystrophy and Bajas disease. Renal osteodystrophy is a disorder due to renal disorder which is manifested in these patients. So chronic kidney disease patients may have this disorder. Barrett's disease is a disorder characterized by focal areas of increased but disorganized bone turnover, which increases the instance of fractures. The bone turnover is due to increased osteoclast activity and hence they decrease they uh, decrease bone density and fractures may occur frequently some endocrine disorders may contribute to the bone metabolic disorders as Cushing disease hypo or hyperpituitarism, hypo or hyperthyroidism, pregnancy, hyperparathyroidism, or even tumors. There may be increased or decreased bone density according to the disorder present and these cases should be investigated thoroughly and managed according to the causative agent or according to the cause of the condition. The final topic in this lecture is the biochemical markers of bone formation and bone degradation. Bone formation markers include alkaline phosphatase which is an enzyme involved in the process of bone metabolism and reflects mainly osteoplastic activity. This enzyme may be elevated normally during puberty and in periods of bone growth and bone formation after injuries. Osteocalcin which is a protein synthesized by osteoclasts and forms a part of the extracellular matrix of bone. Also, procollagen 1 extension peptide as one of the extracellular matrix of bone components. The markers of bone degradation or bone resorption include first fasting urinary calcium which reflects skeletal resorption status and also intestinal and renal absorption and filtration. But this parameter lacks sensitivity. Second one is hydroxyproline which is a component of collagen of the bone matrix and it can be measured by different ways as photometry or high performance liquid or high pressure liquid chromatography. Last one is urinary paridinium cross links which are also markers of bone degradation and by this we end our lecture. Thank you.